Hey, Nomadic Fanatic, Eric here. Um, real quick, I um, got the prototype for the new Nomadic Fanatic t-shirt. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, has me and Jax on it in the RV, YouTube.com, Nomadic Fanatic. Thank you, uh, Eric Lyon, for the uh, design on the logo. And uh, Scott Weber also helping me out on um, finding a way to print the shirts and uh, get the website up and running. So if you guys want to buy some merchandise, you can. Um, but I'd do a really cool video on RV power because I don't think there's any out there that really explain RV power in a dumbed-down version that doesn't have all the technical mumbo-jumbo. Like, just understanding. Like, um, And I don't want to get a whole bunch of people who are going to correct me on all the little terms and stuff like that. Probably half of you guys know more about this than I do, but I'm really just aiming towards the people that don't understand that when they're parked here at Walmart, why can't you plug in your MacBook charger into the outlet and it doesn't charge? You know, so if that's a question you have and you want to understand RV power more, I'm here to explain it in a much more simpler way. First thing you're going to want to understand is that RVs have two sides of power. On one side, they have the AC 110 volt electricity, which is a lot like your home's electricity with those types of outlets. It also even has a breaker box where if you run too many things at once, you can trip a breaker and you have to go reset it. Um, RVs have that box down there. It's in a box that's usually called something like a converter slash charger unit. They look like normal circuit breaker boxes that can be tripped. Sometimes they have fuses and stuff in them, and a lot of times the device actually serves as many other functions besides just being a power box. So along with all those different uh, circuit breakers that you have in your RV, you're also going to have a certain amount of amps coming in. It's a lot less amps that are going into your house, though. Usually RVs are either going to be a 30 amp service or a 50 amp service. It's not important to know which one, one of those you have in your RV unless you're going to go to an RV site and they only offer one of those. Well, it's always good that if you're a 50 amp uh, RV cord, you're going to get want to get the adapter that brings it down to a 30 amp or vice versa. Um, if you're a 30 amp and you switch into 50, obviously you're only still going to get 30 amps brought into your service. But it is good to have those adapters with you just in case. In order to get power out of the outlets that are in your RV, there's two ways that that's going to happen. The main way is to have your power cord plugged into what RVers call shore power or dock power. So the, you pull the cord out of the side of your RV and you find a place to plug that into the receptacle that fits. And the, the second way to get power out of your outlets is to run your onboard generator if you have one. Running the generator will make it so that you can use all of your outlets. Now the device that kind of controls this power is usually called your converter slash charger. Um, they can be located in different parts throughout the RV. Mine's over here. I'll show some pictures of some different versions of ones um, uh, that I found online. But um, as you can see, it's got breakers, it's got fuses, um, it says converter charger right on it. So that kind of tells you that it's able to convert power and basically be the guts of your RV system. Now on the other side of the AC power, the other half of your RV's power is in DC 12 volt power. To me, this is the more important and the much more used uh, power for me as I boondock because I'm not plugged into shore power very often. What happens is an RV is going to have at least one deep cycle battery somewhere in the RV that is completely separate from the battery that starts the engine of your RV. The deep cycle battery is actually a special battery that is it's better able to be more completely drained and then filled back up as opposed to the one in your engine where it pretty much stays at or above 90% all the time, only having to start up your starter to, in order to start the engine. Some RVs also have multiple DC batteries to power their RV. Um, there's lots of different setups. And so then let's go back to that converter charger system that you have in your RV. When you're plugged into power, you're actually going to have the ability for that machine to convert the AC power into the DC power so that you can operate the stuff like the lights in here and the water pump and anything else that runs on DC battery. When you're plugged in, you really don't have to worry about anything because your RV knows what to do. It knows to power the normal outlets. It also knows to just automatically convert that AC power into DC power so you can use everything when you're plugged into power. But like I said, for me, that's not always the case. I'm usually dependent on DC battery only. One other thing I forgot to say, so I don't, you probably saw that I had an orange extension cord plugged in with that uh, adapter. Uh, that is not meant to be used for any long term period. Um, that's not running enough power to actually power all the appliances in your RV. You definitely never want to run anything more than just a couple fans 
Um, it's actually meant for like charging your battery. Like you would plug that extension cord into your RV like three days before you leave on a big trip. And even if your battery was completely dead in three days, your trickle charger will charge it back up and have it full before you leave on vacation. It's not meant for living like that. Um, powering up appliances because you really need the thicker gauge cord, the 30 or 50 amp cord to go all the way to the source where you're plugged in. So never use an extension cord for powering while you're living in your RV. There's four ways that you're actually able to charge your deep cycle batteries in your RV. The most common way is just while you're driving, your alternator up front is actually charging that battery at a very low amp. The second way is when you're plugged into power, shore power, dock power, your converter charger is also sending a low amperage charge to your battery. The third way is a lot like shore power, but when you run your generator, you are also powering up that converter and able to charge the battery. And the fourth way, although I don't have it right now, it is in the near future, is to have solar panels that are able to charge that battery. Now one thing you might need to understand, the converter charger that comes standard on a lot of RVs, it is a very weak charger and it is only able to trickle charge your deep cycle battery. Basically what that means is it's sending a very low amperage charge to your battery. If your battery was below 50% and you were hoping that that charger is going to be able to charge that battery quickly, that's not going to be the case. Eight hours might not even charge that battery. A lot of people have been updating their stock converter chargers with four-stage smart chargers um, because they're able to charge at a much quicker rate. Um, they understand that the battery is almost empty and they have to um, increase the power to charge that battery. But if you don't have that kind of money to spend, what you can also do is what I did. I spent $50 and I bought an external smart charger. And it's a little extra work because when I run the generator, I physically have to plug the machine in and then clamp it to the cables of the battery every time. But I'm able to get a much higher rate of charge and be able to charge that battery in under two hours every day. So that is an option if you don't have the money to spend like $500 to replace the entire unit with a smart charger. So let's talk about what you're able to use when you're boondocking. Let's say, for instance, I'm boondocking right now and I don't have my generator running, I'm not plugged into power. What am I not going to be able to use right now? Well, all of the outlets. You're not going to be able to use any of your normal household AC outlets right now. None of them are going to have power. You're also not going to be able to run your air conditioner on top of your roof or any other type of fluorescent light that takes AC power. What you will be able to use, if your deep cycle battery is charged, is all of your DC lighting, which is pretty standard throughout the RV. The water pump will be able to cycle on and off and give you water in the sink and the toilet and the shower. Your fans, if you have uh, vent fans up above, those will be able to be powered on. Your furnace fan will actually be able to blow throughout all the vents throughout your RV. All of your igniting sources that require an, an, an actual spark to be able to hit the propane and make those work, like your propane when it first takes on for your furnace, or your water heater, um, or your stove and your oven, or even your fridge and freezer if you're running that on propane. All of those sparks will work on your DC pad. So you won't be able to charge your laptop. However, many of you know I do charge my laptop and you're probably wondering how I'm able to do that when I'm not running the generator or plugged into shore power. I'm able to do that through what's called an, an inverter. An inverter is not usually included in any RV purchase unless it's one of the newer ones. Now you can buy inverters in many different sizes including one that I can't find right now, but I use it in my car even. It's a really small, just 140 watt inverter that you could plug into any cigarette lighter, even in your car as you're driving. And it gives you an outlet where you can plug something like this into and a USB with it as well. Now, remember at 140 watts, you're really not gonna be, pow be able to power up much. That'll charge your laptop. Um, I was once able to also run a small 19 inch TV in my PlayStation 2 from my car. Um, but what I have on board now is down by my battery under this couch where my water tank's at is I have a 1000 watt inverter. And that's been getting me by pretty well so far, but I would like to up that to like a 3000 watt inverter. Um, because with 1000 watts, I can't run my microwave. Um, I can't run my old coffee maker, but I can run my new one that's only 600 watts. Um, obviously I can't run the air conditioner. Um, it won't run a vacuum cleaner. 
Um, so I am kind of limited what I can use with it, but um, I'm not able to... But in order to use the power from that inverter, I have to plug directly into it. So I have an extension cord sticking out of the couch where I could just plug in my laptop right there, or I could plug in a, like a surge protector that has six different plugs and be able to charge a whole bunch of stuff at once as long as I don't exceed 1,000 watts. It is uh, hardwired to the battery, so it's a stationary device compared to the, the more mobile one that you can bring into your car. But remember, too, if you get the small ones that have the cigarette lighter attachment, don't plug that directly into the one that's up in your cab because that's going to be draining off your normal driving battery. You're going to want to, um, well, some RVs, some RVs actually um, install DC outlets that look like cigarette lighter outlets throughout the RV. I have one up there by the TV. That wasn't enough, so I actually installed a second one, and I uh, wired that straight from the battery, ran it all the way up to the front, and then I mounted it near the cup holder up front right next to the other uh, cigarette lighter. Uh, that just gives me two options to have um, to plug inverters into. Some people kind of think it's um, a pain that having an inverter doesn't uh, actually convert all of your normal outlets through here, and, um, you know, I... So many people have been complaining to me like when I when I tell them about that that I, I really just don't even know what to say anymore. You know, if it's if it's that important to you to to have every single outlet in your RV uh, be able to be converted into AC power from your inverter, then uh, I there there probably are machines and ways and wires if you have the money. And for some reason, a lot of my viewers lately have been like really rich and able to spend thousands of thousand dollars on this stuff and. That's kind of the opposite of what I try and teach here on my videos. So if that's important to you, I'm sure you could find the resources and go take it into an RV shop and um, make all of your outlets work. But uh, for a person like me, you can get a 1,000 watt inverter like this for under 200 bucks. Um, they go up from there pretty much. But um, like, like I said, it has a cord sticking out near underneath the couch and I can plug in one thing at a time or I can plug my surge protector in that has multiple outlets as long as I don't see a, th a thousand watts, which is really hard. A thousand watts will, will charge this, it'll charge every other device I own, my cell phone, my Bluetooth speaker, all of my razors and trimmers, I can run the TV and the DVD player, and all the lights, and I'm still not exceeding a thousand watts, so that's what I mean by it's, it's worked for me, but I would like to upgrade it so I can run a few other ap appliances also on the road after I get solar installed. So yeah, I hope that was helpful to you in understanding RV power. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know what I forgot, and I will explain those uh, in the comments below. Again, if I've made some mistake and you're an expert and uh, my numbers are off or I said something wrong, you don't need to correct me. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep it simplified so that, so that people that don't understand could make it through this video and not be like, ah, what the hell did he say? Again, so thank you, subscribe, and I'll be talking to you guys later. And if you want to help fund my solar project and the other repairs on my RV, again, I will put the Indiegogo link in the uh, description of this video. Just click uh, see more or something like that. Um, and you'll see that link. Um, there are some other options on there. I don't have a t-shirt option right now, but there is a coffee cup perk on there for, I think, 25 bucks. So that's really cool. And I'll be getting the prototype for the coffee cup here within the next week. All right. Talk to you guys later.